So you clicked on this video because you're feeling undeserving or maybe looking for just a small glimmer of hope. And why shouldn't you be looking for that? Because Christmas season is the season of hope. And maybe you felt this way before. You knew there was a big Christmas present for you underneath the tree. Christmas morning, you run down, you grab that big gift, you rip it open, and when you open it up, what do you find? A big pink bunny suit or something else you didn't really care for. And in one epic swoop, your Christmas spirit was swept away. There's just no Christmas spirit anymore. Now, for some of you, you felt this way about your Christian life. At one point, you started to follow Jesus, and then all of a sudden, you started to realize maybe this Christian thing wasn't really working out for you. So maybe there's something wrong with me, or I'm just undeserving. Well, join me today, and I'll show you the secret to hope when you're feeling undeserving on Church Door. So hopefully you picked up on my subtle nod to the Christmas classic, A Christmas Story. This is one of my absolute favorite Christmas movies. And our family, of course, was one of those weird families that kept it playing in the background for 24 hours when it was on TV during Christmas time. Of course, I was giving nod to that famous scene where Ralphie comes down the stairs, opens that big gift from his aunt, and what does he find? Is none other than that infamous bright pink bunny pajamas. I don't want to. Now for Ralphie, this gift had to be nothing more than deflating to say the least. And I think it's this sense of disconnection that often happens to people in their Christian pursuit. They came to Christianity believing they were getting something. And after pursuing it for a time, they go, wait, 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 wait. This is not exactly what I thought I was looking for. Isn't this Christianity thing supposed to make my life better? Then things get rough and life is tough and the doubts begin to flood in. After that come the thoughts, maybe I'm not meant to be blessed or maybe I'm just undeserving. Unfortunately, in this scenario, you've come to Jesus for what you wanted to get rather than who you would receive. In the book of John, we're greeted by a very different telling of the story of Jesus. The other three synoptic gospels seem very connected, but this one book is a outlier and all for good reason. John was trying to help bring clarity to who Jesus was. The disciple John was known for his fiery demeanor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So much so he is referred to as a son of thunder along with his brother James. Throughout his calling to follow Jesus, it seems that time and time again, he fought for power and position. At the transfiguration, he argued with other disciples about pecking order, who was the greatest among them. He also zealously asked Jesus if he wanted him to call down fire when Jesus was rejected in Samaria. John, not unlike many of us, came to Jesus thinking he would receive something else, something that directly benefited him in a purely self-serving way. Yet by the time John wrote this gospel, it was obvious that he had time to reflect. And as you read this book, you will see that John's purpose for writing it was specifically to show who Jesus was. And who did he believe Jesus was? He believed that Jesus was God. So here it is. The secret to hope when you're feeling undeserving, it's this. We must believe that Jesus is God not simply an answer to all of our problems. The real truth is that so many people who claim to be Christians want all that Jesus has to offer, but want very little to do with Jesus himself. Many have focused on the healing rather than the healer, what they get rather than who was given. At the very center of what John looked to communicate is not just all the great things that Jesus did accomplish on our behalf, but that Jesus is God himself, a God who loves us enough to take on flesh in order to mend a relationship that has been broken from the dawn of humanity. Now this is how John's gospel makes that clear. It says this, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Now as an artist, I love this painterly language, but for some, it can be confusing. So the question is, what is the word? Hmm. 
Well, if you skip down to verse 14, you can see very clearly who the word is. It says this, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. The word who was with God eternally and is God, he became flesh and dwelt among us. This concept is known as the incarnation and is what the first week of Advent is all about. That hope would be brought to the world and realized through God coming in flesh, Jesus, Emmanuel, meaning God with us. For John, this was also affirming a long awaited Old Testament prophecy about a coming Messiah. And why was this Messiah promised to come? Well, back in verse four, it says this, in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. This light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. In other words, Jesus is life. Without Jesus, we are dead. We are separated from God in our darkness and selfishness. But take note, this scripture does not say through Jesus, we get light, the forgiveness, the blessing, the salvations, you name it. No, these scriptures say in him, we receive light. It is when we come to Jesus because we want a relationship with him that we receive all the hope that comes along with the savior, Jesus. You see, here's the real truth. I know that I'm really crummy at staying away from sin. But when I chase after God, his ways that are higher than my ways, I find that because I love Jesus and I have a relationship with him, that sin and darkness is way less attractive to me. And that's why I've said this in so many videos. If you want hope in your life, stop trying to stop sinning and start chasing after Jesus. If you've never given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we have a team of people here today that wanna to meet with you. They wanna pray with you. They wanna help you know what it means to take your first steps with him. So go ahead, hit us up in the chat box or in the comments. You could also text us at the number you see coming up on the screen with the word prayer. We'd love to connect with you and help you take those steps. Hey, thanks so much for coming to be with us today. We're so glad that you are here. Do us a quick favor, help us promote great Christian content by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's coming directly to you. Or you can go to the extra mile by going to our website, rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that we get goes right back into helping people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We're so glad that you've come to be with us here today. Our prayer for you is as you walk with Jesus that you may know that it is God, Emmanuel, with you. No matter what you face, that you have the creator of all things right by your side. We can't wait to see you next week. Have a blessed week.